folks to arrive and then Dr. Lane, uh, it's all you to welcome our colleagues today. All right, Leah, you want me to go ahead and get started? Looks like we are live, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be with you at our Culturally Relevant Inclusive Education Practices Advisory Committee. Welcome again to our meeting. I'll, I will keep my remarks brief because I know that uh, uh, many of you uh, are excited about the topics that we're going to get into today. I did want to apologize on behalf of Senator Boisco, as I'm sure you know, the Senate is in session today, and uh, they're, they're nearing the finalization of, of session, so she could not attend and wanted me to apologize on her behalf. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the agenda in the Dropbox, and we have uh, most of our work today dedicated, after a few uh, reports, to focusing on work plan development in our breakouts. And so to make sure you have plenty of time for breakouts and plenty of time for public comment, I will just stop with a, a hello and a thank you for being a part of this committee again, and uh, we will move forward in our agenda. And so I don't know if I'm handing it over to Holly for item two, Leah, or if we're doing something else in introductions. And so just let me know. I know we're gonna move straight through the agenda. Great, thank you, Dr. Lane. And thank you, Leah, this is Holly Coy. Assistant Superintendent for Policy, Equity, and Communications at the Department of Education. And it is a pleasure to be back with all of you. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. I have the honor this afternoon of providing everybody with an update on some legislation that I am so pleased to announce has successfully made its way through the General Assembly. Uh, and this is the Culturally Responsive, Culturally Competent Educators Bill. Uh, this came out, you might recall, for, of the African American History Education Commission, uh, included a number of their recommendations uh, and was legislation that the governor uh, put forward. Uh, the bills were carried by Delegate Jenkins and by Senator Locke, and the bills were identical. They've done a, they do a couple of things. Um, around cultural competency, the bill states that the state's performance guidelines for evaluations uh, must include cultural competency as part of evaluations for our teachers, for our principals, and for our superintendents. It also states uh, that the, every school board in Virginia shall establish policies uh, whereby anybody who holds a DOE license uh, receives training in culturally competent education, and that they do this training uh, in accordance with board guidelines that the board will set out uh, the Board of Education, that is, uh, and that they will do that every two years. Uh, so the, the bill charges the Virginia Board of Education with establishing the guidelines for uh, that training by December of 2021. So this year, the board will have to have that in place. And then school boards um, will, will put in place the local policies to ensure that licensees get that training every two years. Everybody has to complete it for the first time by the 22-23 school year. So there's about a year to, to um, live into that requirement. And then the last thing the bill does uh, is uh, requires that anyone who is getting their initial or renewing a license uh, receives training in cultural competency. Uh, and that those who are getting an initial endorsement or renewing an endorsement in history and social studies uh, receives instructional content related to African American history specifically. Again, this is coming out of the African American History Education Commission. Uh, and so uh, that is what the bills do. Like I said, they were identical and they have now successfully passed both chambers uh, are, and are headed to the governor for his signature and will go into effect on July 1st. So we are thrilled to provide that update. Uh, lots of clapping, yes. 
Um, the other piece that I have to report on this topic is that the governor's introduced budget also included a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, to build state capacity on this topic with staff and professional development available to educators around the Commonwealth. So that was in the governor's proposed budget and it has survived the House and Senate budgets. And so the, um, the budget process isn't quite done yet, uh, but we are cautiously optimistic uh, as it hasn't been touched by, by anybody yet. So um, it's, it's not over till it's over, uh, but, but again, we're optimistic that that will remain alongside the bill. I saw a quick question there of the bill numbers. I apologize for not mentioning those earlier. Uh, the two bill numbers were House Bill 1904 and Senate Bill 1196, and they were identical. So either one will get you to the right place. And that's my, my uh, good news update for the afternoon, and I'll turn it back over to Leah for our next uh, agenda item. Thank you so much, Holly. Were there any questions from um, any of the committee members related to the legislation? Um, we don't want to have a really in-depth conversation about uh, what we think that implementation will look like just yet. But if you have any questions um, pertaining to the actual bill language, uh, feel free to ask those now, and then we'll move forward in the agenda. Great. I don't see any any hands up or mics all turned on, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, I think the next thing on our agenda is for me to turn the meeting over to my esteemed uh, co-driver uh, of this ship. Oh, wait, we're not drivers. What are we? Um, captains, whatever, however you drive a ship. Um, I should ask Andrew that. He's always on a boat. But um, <laughs> To, to my, my esteemed colleagues in our uh, instruction and department uh, office of learning, uh, Christania Brown and Christine Harris. Before I do that though, I do just, uh, while we're all together, I wanna acknowledge and um, say happy Black History Month to everyone here today. We've got about a week left of Black History Month. I have on my Black History Month sweatshirt. Um, I saved it all week just to wear it for this meeting. And so, um, I want to just share that with you all and we've shared a plethora of resources related to Black History Month um, on our website and in our monthly news at Equity VA newsletter. So um, if you need any resources, we certainly have a, a, a very exhaustive compendium of resources for educators across the state. So without further ado, Christania. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. And again, happy Black History Month to you all. I have my Harriet Tubman behind me. I don't have a t-shirt, but um, what I'd like to do this afternoon is to go through very briefly for you the review and revision um, process and to give you um, just a little taste of what we will be going through. I do want to preface it by saying that um, the African American History Education Commission in their recommendations um, recommended that we expand the process. So I wanted to share that information with you. Also in um, the Dropbox, this presentation does appear. So the links that you will see in the presentation during this brief time, you will be able to um, click on a little bit later. So Christine, I'm going to share my screen and I believe you will have the very beginning of our presentation. All right, can everyone see that thumbs up if you can? Great. All right. So the review and revision of the history and social science standards of learning. So Christine, take it away. All right. We thought we would set the stage of just the foundation so everyone was on the same page. The standards of learning, um, as many of you probably are aware, establish the minimum expectations of what students need to know and be able to do at the end of each course. We do have them for multiple courses. Um, in addition to history, we have them in English, math, science, um, world languages, fine arts, you'll find them in computer science, um, in, in many of our health and PE, our driver's education. Um, and they set, again, the minimum expectations for what students have to know and be able to do. Uh, let's see. 
The standards of learning do belong to our Board of Education. In the Code of Virginia, it outlines that these educational objectives, which are known as the standards, are designed to ensure that the skills um, are the foundations for students to be successful in school and not just in school to prepare them for life and beyond. And they do support the profile of the Virginia graduate. In the code, the board is required to establish a schedule and we do have that schedule available um, for the review and revision cycle. Um, it may be necessary for the board to direct us to review them sooner than the cycle that's established. We have them once every seven years. And um, as many of you are aware, the history standards will be reviewed and revised for 2022. So we started that process this past January. Um, again, the standards are in multiple areas. The um, public comments period is important piece of this work. Um, in 1995, the board took important steps, as it says here, to adopt the standards in the, the core areas as well as technology, and they have grown over time. So the profile of a Virginia graduate sets the foundation of what students need to know and be able to do to be life ready. It's that knowledge, the skills, the attributes and experiences that are critical for success. Um, they are for not just for Virginia graduates, but starting in kindergarten and work in pre-K, working all the way through the process so that students are successful and life ready. It involves not just what happens in the schoolhouse, but work-based learning experiences. And then as many of you are aware and um, have worked with our Virginia five C's, um, our five C's are intertwined with our standards of learning. Um, our standards have included over the past um, five years, the five C's are embedded in there. They are um, an integral part of what students have to know and be able to do with critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creative thinking, and citizenship. They apply the knowledge, they are the workplace readiness skills, and they align to um, knowledge and career opportunities. I believe Leah shared at our last meeting, we now have equity five C's and those two are embedded in our work. We do have eight superintendent regions. It's a way that we are able to divide our Commonwealth so that there is support for what um, the schools need, how regions can collaborate and work together to make everything happen by um, working as teams to have professional development, to create resources, to look historically at events and periods of time in their communities and share those resources with museums and other organizations. So we do have eight superintendent regions, which you may hear referenced throughout this. So that you have context, when we are talking about um, this work, everyone brings their own perspective, but there are 1,853 public schools in Virginia, which are 132 school divisions, which are all unique and important. And at the end of the day, the work that you're doing is so critical and important to support the 1.2 million teach, uh, students in our Commonwealth. And so uh, while you bring your perspective from your community, it really is feeding into a larger picture. And we value your work and how it's going to contribute to the work of, of the larger group. Thank you, Christine. So, the overview of the process that we will be using this time for the um, review and revision of the history and social science standards. I want to start with first, what is the role of the Virginia Department of Education? Our role basically is to implement the process, gather input, and make recommendations to the board. So as you see on the timeline, when you have an opportunity to look at it in more depth, you'll see that we'll be gathering gathering um, public comments from not only the general public, but we will have specific groups that will come together and provide input so that we can propose to the board the best document possible. The review and revision process itself, we have two basic goals. 
first of all, knowing that history and social science is vital. And as we remember from our last meeting, um, right in the middle, I believe it was towards the end of my presentation before we went into Leah's presentation, we had history happening right then and there. But it is vital in order for us to promote civic-minded and a democratic society. The standard, another goal of our um, process, our review and revision process, is that we want to make sure that our standards reflect what students need to know, understand, and be able to do as a part of our national heritage and also becoming informed participants in shaping our nation's future. So those are our big, big goals. And as we meet with each individual um, committee, they will have um, a mission and a goal for themselves. Like I said um, before, we have a timeline and that timeline is linked in this presentation. It goes into more depth. It does include the ending of the African-American History Education Commission and moves into um, a timeline for not only the review, but also incorporating the work of this advisory committee. This time around, we did establish a web page on the VDOE website that is specifically set up for the review and revision. Um, that's where you can go right now. Currently, you can click on a link that will take you directly to the timeline. You can also click on different links to submit public comment. That's something different that we decided to do this, this time around to make it easier for the general public to become a part of the process. In general, these are the major highlights of the timeline that we will be moving through. As you can see, um, the very first thing that we started with was with the board, because again, the standards belong to the Board of Ed, and they did receive our timeline on the 28th of January. We are right now in the middle of our public comment period. Um, between now and the summer, we will be getting ready for our um, educators committees. They will meet in July and then we'll move into our external committees. They will meet in August and September. And then hopefully we will be able to take an update to the board um, about our progress in November and then moving on between the spring of 2022 until we get, to July 2022, preparing the document to take it to the board for first review. In between first review and final review, we will hold public hearings across the Commonwealth so that people can, general the general public, members of this committee, students, parents, administrators can all um, come to the public hearings to comment on the proposed document that we will take to the board in July. And then between July and November, we will be preparing that document for final review in November of 2022. So who are these people that we will be working with um, to gather input from? Through the African American History Education's um, recommendations, we in the past have had an external committee and an educators committee. And this past um, review for 2015, we did add one extra layer and that was a steering committee for basically practitioners. Those people were basically um, division level curriculum specialists that have an understanding of the standards K-12. This time around, we've added several different layers to our committees. First of all, we will have a steering committee that is made up of just historians, and we will have a steering committee that is made up of just practitioners. We will also have an external committee that will expand the historians and institutions of higher education looking for those college professors that specialize in methods courses for, his, for social studies. So we do have that committee. We will have our practitioners committee, which is our steering committee. Our educators committee, as recommended by the commission, we've expanded that um, those subcommittees. 
in the past, we've had about three members per course that would review um, the 13 courses that we offer um, board approved courses for history and social science. We've upped that to about five members um, per group. And that means that our educators committee went from something around 40, 45 members to about 65 men members this time. Also recommended by the um, commission was to get that student's voice. We found that when we had a listening session prior to the pandemic, um, we had a panel of students and they gave some very, very unique insight into what they had received for, K, for their K-12 experience for history and social science. So we will be convening a group of students together to provide um, feedback, public comment on the standards. Our last external group will be our museums and uh, um, organizations. And I won't read to you exactly um, the description of those committees, but you can see we have several museums that have um, in partnerships with museums that have um, a specialty or an area of focus. So I apologize. I am being reminded that I have another meeting coming up. Um, and then also various organizations um, that have a specific area of focus. As far as this advisory committee is concerned, your recommendations will be seen by all of the committees that are listed on this slide. Everyone will be informed of the recommendations that's being made as far as standards are concerned. But the, there are a few points that I would like for you to ponder as we move through our work. There are many different challenges when we're talking about reviewing and revising the history and social science standards. I say all the time, we are the discipline that includes everybody on the planet, every culture, every country, you name it, we have it there. But we are still dealing with students that are between the ages of five, sometimes three to five to 18 to 21 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to, uh, to note that we do have a lot of people that are contributing to this document. And even though we've had the standards document and the curriculum framework um, as two separate documents, this time we will have one document and we do have a lot of experts um, involved in ensuring that we come up with the best document possible that's historically accurate and equitable. We also would like for you to um, note that these courses are survey courses everything we would like to teach, but we they are survey courses. And it is to light that spark for further exploration past graduation. And then also, um, especially for our members of our standard subcommittee, whenever we're considering adding content, we also need to consider what is it that we need to either blend together or, or remove. So keeping that, those points in mind, the history and social science standards have been um, the basis for social studies instruction for well over 25 years. And if you go back and look at those first standards um, in 1995, you will see changes in content and skills working towards changing instruction in our history and social science classrooms. That is a major goal for me. So as the standards um, establish minimum expectations for what students should know, understand, and be able to do by the end of each course, the standards are also the base for local school divisions to build their curriculum. This gives them an opportunity to bring in that local history. Many times, especially in Virginia, there is so much local history that people can bring into their local curriculum. So what we'd like to do with our revision this time is to provide opportunities for curriculum specialists to do that at the local level, for teachers to be able to do that in their classrooms. 
So my final word. It is our hope that this advisory council will have ideas and suggestions to help us make visible that history that has been invisible in the past and looking at that history through a different lens, a l lenses of accuracy and equity. Much like Dr. King said in his speech, now is the time. So we are very much looking forward to working with all of you, getting those suggestions from you, those ideas of how we can make our history and social science document be something that students and teachers will be able to apply well outside of their classrooms. So thank you very much in our subcommittee. I look forward to seeing you at our next um, breakout. Thank you, Leah. Thank you so much, Chris Tanya and Dr. Harris um, for that overview. We thought it was really important that the full committee um, have a understanding of um, the scope of the Virginia history and social science standards, the timeline, and sort of some of the other connected pieces to this overall work um, because we're trying really, really hard to be super intentional about not operating in silos um, in the way that we are approaching both the revisions to the standards and our broader efforts around increasing the cultural proficiency of Virginia's educator workforce. So um, with that, that concludes the formal presentation uh, portion of our meeting. And we're going to be moving into public comment before we go into our breakout session. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is because we wanna make sure that public comment is a part of our live stream so that we um, provide the utmost transparency around the work that this committee is doing. So at this time, we do have nine members of the public joining us as attendees um, to this meeting. Um, before we move into public comment, I see a hand raised. So if there are any questions for Dr. Harris or Cristania, uh, let's do that first and then we'll move into public comment. So um, Ms. Lee, did you have a question? I saw your hand up. No? How do you get questions in? Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Cristania or um, Christine? Yes, I have one. But how do I get it in? Okay, that's, you can just speak, you're on. Okay. Um, I have had my lights went out. They came back. They were out yesterday. I've had terrible problems. And I tried when I started today, the computer went out. And then I tried the phone, which always works. It went out. And when I got back, I missed the beginning of the cap. How do I find out what you all said in the beginning? So this, um, the full uh, meeting will actually be posted um, on our YouTube channel okay. as soon as this concludes. So you can go back and watch that information Wonderful. at any point in time. Wonderful. Okay, okay thank you. This Absolutely. has been a week. Thank you very much. Yes, and um, all of the presentations have been uploaded to the committee's public Dropbox folder. Any, okay. any other questions, comments about what you heard? Oh. Leah, I added to the chat box the superintendent's memo with the Black History Month resources, as well as the Virginia Equity Framework and the Cultural Competency resources. Thank you, Dr. Harris. You're welcome. And I just heard that our newsletter just went out. So if you subscribe to the Ed Equity VA newsletter, you should have received that as well. All right, so we're going to move into public comment at this point in time. Um, I see uh, Dina Forbes has her hand raised. Ms. Forbes, um, please, I will uh, unmute you and please keep your comments to uh, under two minutes. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Leah. Uh, my name is Deanna Forbes. I am a social studies teacher at um, Freedom High School in Prince William County. Um, and this is my first time kind of, you know, tuning in to um, this meeting. And I did have a question um, uh, a couple minutes ago, Miss Cristania was going through a slide that talked about um, teachers being kind of recommended. Is it to uh, this particular committee, or is it for um, direct work with help with the standards? 
So for public comment, um, we try not to do specific questions because we okay. don't want to be in a position. But if you would um, sh uh, share your email address, um, Christina would be happy to follow up with you. And um, Janae, if you wouldn't mind just posting, uh, popping into the chat, the link for the committee webpage. And there you can find more information about how committee members were selected uh, for this particular body and what the opportunities are to participate going forward. Okay. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Any other uh, public comment? If you would just raise your hand if you are in the um, attendee list. Ms. Smith, I am going to uh, allow you to open your mic at this point in time. Hi, um, I, I've already typed it in the chat box, but I was just curious just for myself um, if there is presently already a, uh, a curriculum for high school students, um, a history class, a history elective in Latin American studies. That's all. Okay. Um, Christania, do you want to? So again, public comment is actually to comment on the charge of the committee. Um, so if you have specific questions, we really would ask that you direct those questions to our email address you know, at Equity VA. You no, know, I guess my question actually is, is 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 part of Equity that you know there are a lot of urban students that 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 are Latin X. So will that be part of the Equity objective? I guess is another part of the question. So currently we do not have a course um, specifically for Latin American history. Um, we would truly appreciate any comments that you have and I can send you the link to our public comments page and whether it is adding content to already established courses or if your comment is that we need to generate a course, then that we can definitely take that under consideration and propose that um, to our senior leadership and board. But um, if you would like, I can put my email address in the chat and you can send that directly to me um, for the future. All right, Ms. Smith? Great. Thank you for your, thank you for your comment. We appreciate that. Uh, anyone else for public comment? Please raise your hand now. Okay. All right, we have one other. Ms. Wilson? I didn't have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're, Thank you, you know. <laughs> okay. No problem. Your hand was raised. Anyone else in the attendees who would like to make a public comment? Okay. Hearing none, then I'm, we're really close to time uh, that we had for this. So I'm going to uh, conclude now this portion of the committee meeting. As you all know, we will be moving into independent work sessions of the subcommittees. Uh, okay, Ms. Violet, I see your hand up. Yes, uh, Janet Valenzuela sent me a text. She has sent a letter from the Arlington uh, Superintendent's Advisory Committee and she has raised her hand and she said that she has not been called, Janet Valenzuela. Okay, thank you. I will open her mic now. Ms. Venezuela, if you have public comment. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Janet Valenzuela and I am a community leader and advocate and co-vice chair of the Superintendent's Advisory Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Students Concerns for Arlington Public Schools. The issue of cultural relevant teaching has been a major concern of our committee. Arlington is a diverse county with the students from around the world. Our experience has taught us that not only do our children succeed better when their history, culture, and experience are respected and incorporated into the classroom, but all the students benefit from an understanding of the mosaic that is Virginia today. Therefore, our committee 
request that you make clear in your final recommendation that the stories of all students should be reflected in K-12 educational practices to include all immigrants in addition to African-Americans, indigenous peoples and whites. Specifically, we are asking for a commission on immigrant and refugee history education be created following the model of the African-American history education commission and its recommendations. Content resource be made available to educators and to be expanded to ensure they can successfully implement culturally competent teaching. There to also be a review of the standards of learning in other subject areas, as well as history and social science. Our experience in Arlington is that in addition to culturally responsive instruction, education, art, music, theater, and other elective classes also help support students to own their stories. Please refer to the letter we sent with more details. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Venezuela, for your uh, comments and for your letter. Uh, for the full committee and ma any members of the public interested in uh, written public comment that we have received, I would just um, let you know that we are planning to upload any written public comment officially into that public Dropbox. So as we receive those emails, uh, we will be uh, adding those there for your review uh, and consideration. Okay. Is there any other public comment? I am so sorry I moved too quickly through that. I see that Dr. Harris has posted the individual links for our meeting uh, work sessions. And so, all right, so then before we adjourn into our work sessions, I wanna give our co-chairs an opportunity to greet you as well. Um, Dr. Francisco Duran and Dr. Dare, uh, Andrew Dare, if you have any final comments before we move into our breakout groups. Thank so you, uh, Leah. I would, oh, go ahead, Dr. Dare. Go no, ahead. no, you go, you go. I'll just quickly say welcome to everyone. Look forward to rolling up our sleeves and get into the subcommittee that I am um, working on uh, with regards to standards review. So happy to see everyone here. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Valenzuela. I'll just, uh, as a personal member of my community, thank you for your, your comments and uh, Certainly uh, do believe that this commission is really charged with how do we ensure all of our stories of all students are included uh, in the history, but not only in the history, as you indicated, all of these subject areas that our students are engaged in. So we're really excited, I think, as members of this group to roll up our sleeves, which is we're about to do. So without further ado, I'll, Dr. Dare. Fantastic. And also just wanted to offer words of welcome to everyone and also words of appreciation. I know this is just such a crazy time um, we've got school closures due to weather and all of these things. I know VCU is closed today and some other places. And it's just exciting to see so many people who are still here today uh, demonstrating their commitment to this work and ultimately demonstrating their commitment uh, for educational equity here in the Commonwealth. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Duran and Dr. Dare. So we are going to conclude this portion of our meeting and uh, ask that everyone rejoin us no later than 2.43. I'm giving y'all a five minute break. Thank you so much. You out of school early? She just let it down. We did. We all we had. All we, all we had to do was a um. Quizzes. So how did you do it? We all just said we something. 
Leah, are you still there? <laughs> 